What are the yep. biggest things you would say about, I mean, I know you talk a lot about fasted training and things like that and, and the difference between females and males. And there must be a, a bunch of others that are like the highlights that maybe females might want to take note of. And I mean, you can just give a quick, you don't have to go into depth on all of them, but um, yeah, I know there's so many, but anything that's like that highlights that maybe people could look into a bit more or do a bit more research with everything you've got out there and, and follow it up following the podcast. I think the biggest thing especially for um, hybrid athletes is eating enough because you think about the volume and the intensity and most women will eat and be full before they've actually eaten enough. So we know that over 50% of recreational female athletes are in a subclinical low energy availability state. So what does that mean? It means you're not eating enough to adapt and remain uninjured. So that's the critical thing. It's like finding eating opportunities and at every eating opportunity, you're having some fiber and some protein help with your gut microbiome and also help with muscle and bone development. It really kind of knocks at any kind of soft tissue injury on the head because you're so predisposed to having soft tissue injuries when you're doing the high intensity um, anaerobic work with the heavy strength work because they're different muscle systems with regards to fueling, but also the different poles on the muscle itself from getting into a steady state, higher tempo run into a sled push pull. Those are all very muscularly demanding and central nervous system demanding. So eating enough is, is something that I cannot express the importance of eating enough. And a lot of people don't realize that they're not eating enough. So I want to push that. Let's Let's be happy that we can eat and we don't need to be put in this little box where we're not supposed to eat because we're supposed to be these demure little women who decided that we want to do this event. It's like, no, eat. It's good. Food is good and we need it. That is one of the biggest things. And this is where all the diet trends of like fasted training or um, following a certain uh, like the carnivore or any of the other diet trends comes into play where you really want to be an individual and look at what are the demands of your life because life stress is definitely a stress that comes into play. We think about women who are working, who have um, kids, partners, and all of the life stress of keeping a household together, as well as trying to train and be competitive. That life stress adds calorie needs and it also adds onto the central nervous system stress. The other thing that a lot of women don't do enough is rest and take recovery days, especially if we're looking at hybrid athletes. Like, oh, I ran yesterday. Today, I'm going to do strength training. Yeah. Okay. How do you feel? Well, I feel a little bit flat. Then why are you going to do strength training? Like you're not going to actually get to the loads that you need to stimulate adaptation. Maybe you need a rest day. If we don't rest, then we don't adapt because the stress of exercise needs to be overcome through recovery. And that's how we get fitter. We don't get fitter in the act of exercise itself. So if I could get every woman who's listening to this, plus everyone who's outside of listening to this, to eat more and recover better, then we would see an influx of really happy, powerful, uninjured athletes. Yeah, I mean, amen to that. Like, I think, yeah, we absolutely agree. And it's such an important message to get across and I think sometimes with the likes of social media nowadays and as much as high rocks is an incredible sport for the female side maybe a lot of it is oh well I want to wear shorts and a sports bra and also look great and that can have a negative effect on I'm gonna train hard not fuel my body enough but I'll feel like I look good on the start line, like, which is not good for longevity and injury prevention. No. And yeah. Like, it's... The allostatic load of life is something that um, a lot of older women forget about. I mean, that's, that was one of the precedences of my injury. One, not having enough time to train properly for the sled, but also coming in severely jet lagged, a lot of emotional stress from uh, unexpected death in the family at Christmas. So coming in and going, yeah, I'm fine. And then not being fine because it was just the extra stress. So that's the other thing where it's like, you really need to have a look and take those recovery days to prevent injury. Even if you're like, I'm really stressed and exercise is my stress reliever. 
finding a way to have other ways to mitigate stress is something else that really does help go far in injury prevention. Yeah, I, I think it's so true. And I think, yeah, a lot of the time everyone's looking for the for the big fix or the, you know, the most interesting thing they can do or the next, you know, I don't know, exciting thing they can add in, but actually just going back to eating enough and, and, and resting. And I guess yeah. most people, I think it's so interesting that you highlight the fact that the time you do adapt. And, and I mean, as PTs and coaches, like working with people, it is really hard to get people to take a break. And everyone's a quite type A personality where they want to keep going and they think if they're resting, they're not, you know, doing as well gaining. as everyone else and gaining. Yeah. And it's it's trying to get through like that. that that's the only time you're going to get stronger is if you can rest and allow your body to repair, reset. 